Uh, thanks everyone for coming, especially because I know that the Forge track is very tempting, especially for people who want to build an app in cloud now. Uh, so some personal news. I'm going to celebrate a very special day in a couple of weeks ago, the, the 21st of September, my birthday. And also, my fourth anniversary as a front-end design technologist at Comala Tech. I like to use the term design technologist because I don't feel really comfortable with front-end engineer, and I don't feel like a pure designer either. Since as part of the UX team, sometimes I code, sometimes I design, sometimes I'm designed while coding, sometimes I get to do some actual UX too. Comala Tech is a platinum top vendor with more than 10 years of history in the Atlassian ecosystem. We have grown from a one-man show to over 25, spread across the globe, with offices in Vancouver and Bilbao, picture here, uh, as well as some remote team members, like me. <laughs> over the last few months, we have started an incredibly ambitious project to move our most popular product family, Komala Workflows, from server to cloud. We have set ourselves a major challenge to deal with the traits of both platforms uh, while reducing most of the UI. During the process of moving to cloud, we have also transitioned our front-end stack from what's embedded in Confluence, a UI with the JavaScript library AES and backbone underscore and jQuery to Atlas Kit with React and Redux. Redux is the state management framework we choose at the moment, but I know it's losing popularity over there. Uh, if you're interested in exploring other options, uh, Brad Woods from Missy Agile had a very interesting talk yesterday in the same room. So if you missed out, uh, check the recordings of the session. Um, this is the most important piece of UI from workflows. We call it the state dialog. It represents the current state of a page as well as the available actions for the current user. This is how it looked like when we were using a UI and this is how it looks now that we have fully migrated it to Atlas Kit. You may think that it hasn't changed that much, that the layout is mostly the same and yes, we added some icons but all in all, pretty much the same. In fact, we could have achieved the same look and feel just upgrading a UI. You may be asking yourself, do I really need Atlas Kit? Do I have to migrate all of my AUI uh, apps to Atlas Kit now? Atlas Kit is an amazing tool set built on top of React, and React's main feature is reactiveness. It makes easy to deal with ever-changing interfaces. But I know, uh, embracing a new framework in in involves investing time in training and refactoring. So if your add-on is not very UI intensive, you may as well stick with IUI. AUI is not going anywhere, it's not going to disappear. Building reactive interfaces like this one is possible with many uh, other libraries and frameworks including Backbone or even jQuery alone. Everything is JavaScript in the end. The main difference with React is how easy it is to get there and how maintainable the outcome is. On top of it, Atlas Kit provides a design layer over the most common used UI elements like avatars, icons, buttons, or form controls. This makes our life much easier because most of the time we only need to think on how to lay out those elements following the Atlassian design guidelines. So, a few years ago, a couple of years ago, as soon as we learned that Atlassian had begun working with React, we took the chance to learn and redo our UI. Atlas Kit was still in development, so for the time being, we wrapped the AES uh, modules in React components. 
and we replaced them with uh, the equivalent Atlas Kit components as they became available. The problem is that jQuery and React don't make good friends. This is because React works on the virtual DOM and it's completely unaware of what happens outside of it. Whereas, whereas uh, jQuery likes to move things around, especially when you have to deal with pop-ups or drop-downs. Is it still possible to work with both technologies? There are ways to, there are workarounds that you could use, but honestly, Atlas Kit is now a mature resource, so there is no need to go down this path anymore. So you may have heard that Atlas Kit is meant for cloud and AUI is meant for server. Well, it doesn't have to be like that. You could use any of both technologies in any of both platforms if you wanted. But as I said before, um, Confl Confluence embeds jQuery together with IUI and Backbone. So how do we get to use Atlas Kit in server? Guess what? We do it with iframes. Uh, we load our Atlas Kit-based React applications in iframes, and we isolate our front-end stack from confluences. In fact, we began doing this even before adopting React, since we found it was some practical way to deal with confluence version, uh, um, confluence upgrades. Uh, we use cross-document messaging, or XDM, to make our iframes communicate with each other I would like to have a quick, quick survey. How many of you know what cross-document messaging means or have used it? If I told you window.post message, does it make any difference? Do you know it more? Well, it's the same, or I, at least I didn't know it was, uh, there was a word for the, the fin defining what uh, window.post message does but I learned as I began, uh, began work, uh, writing this presentation. Um, to provide context to our iframes, we also use current custom AGS params that we pass as your, uh, in the URL or query parameters to our iframes. For example, we pass them the current user's name or the ID of the page they are looking at or if they're administrator to the current space. Although we isolate most of our UI, we are not free from using AUI and Backbone because this is all that we have at hand on the Confluence side. We have developed a custom set of Backbone views to render message flags as well as modal and inline dialogues that serve as crumbs to our iframes. We keep these uh, implementations together in a single JavaScript file that will require us a dependency wherever we need to insert uh, a piece of our UI. This A-frame-based approach allowed us to migrate entire screens or even just small pieces to our new stack by replacing what the velocity templates were rendering before with iframes using JavaScript. If we needed more time to work on the implementations, we will use dark features to conditionally load the new resources before getting rid of the old ones. We sometimes also use dark features to gather free feedback from the BAP customers and partners before releasing them to the public. To illustrate what I have explained so far, Here's a real use case where we are using several iframes that communicate with each other. Uh, first, we will have the backbone view that renders both the inline dialog and its trigger. And inside of it, we render an iframe that loads one of our Atlas Kit based React apps, the state dialog. When the user clicks on the approve button, a post message is sent to the parent frame that was already listening to this event and reacts, rendering a new uh, backbone view that, load, that uh, paints another dialogue. And inside this dialogue, another iframe 
that loads yet another uh, Rea Atlas Kit based React app, the parameters dialog. So, yeah, uh, again, when the user clicks on the approve button, after the REST call that performs the specific action is performed, the outcome is sent to the uh, parent frame with a post message that renders a message flag with the provided message. You see, developing the same product for server and cloud uh, platforms can be a very difficult task, since both environments are very different. As one of my peers used to say, we can do anything we want in server because everything is hackable. We have been trying to achieve this goal for quite some time, even before Atlas Kid was a thing. We had some success with our Jira apps, but it was hard to find a good way to do the same with our biggest and oldest product, Workflows. Our original approach was to have a 100% shared code base. But soon we found ourselves right into many conditions like this one. If cloud does something, or else do something else. Um, we realized that this was making our code too complex and difficult to debug. Sharing all the code base also means that there's a large amount of code that is never going to be executed in one platform because it is meant for the other. And this also has an impact on the size of the bundles. We came to the realization that we needed common UI components, but separate implementations. This get way we could get UI items that would work on both cloud and server platforms, keeping their looks and behavior uh, consistent while leaving the quirks of both environments to the implementation. This is how Workflows Kit was born. So one good thing about React is that it's very easy to create components that are agnostic from business logic. Since we choose to use Redux, we commit to keep the business logic uh, within actions, reducers, and selectors. We took some of the components we had created to, for server and moved them into an NPM repository of their own, creating a library of reusable React components that we could use in both server and cloud. Within this library, we have some simple functional components, like the one we use to show the, the current state of a page. Uh, some others with state management, like the custom user picker we use to assign an approval or tasks, and some other so complex that could be considered apps on their own. At the same time, we took the chance to create wrappers for the Atlas Kit components we were using. We call the collection of these components Komala Kit. This way, if Atlassian releases updates to Atlas Kit components with breaking changes, we can proxy the old implementation to the new one without having to patch every single instance of said component across our apps. We sometimes use them as a middleware too, so we have a mechanism to add some custom properties or simplify their usage. To develop workflow skit components, we use a storybook. Storybook is an amazing tool that provides an isolated environment to develop and test React components. And you know, it also serves as internal documentation for our team. We export these components as ESM modules and use TreeShape King with Webpack, Webpack 4. This way, we have to install one dependency, Workflows Kit, but the final bundles will contain only the relevant code, the actual components we are really using. So finally, this is how the state dialog looks, in ser looks like in server. Uh, this is the, an approval that requires uh, user authentication, or as we call it, e-signature. And this would be the same use case in cloud. As you can see, we had to replace the user field with email because of GDPR. And there are some layout issues that we still need to fix, like the gap around the iframe 
that we cannot get rid of in cloud. But we're almost there. If you're interested in learning more about working with a custom UI library, Arnie Freire from Tempo is giving a, a more in-depth talk later on today. And finally, now that you have seen all the theory, I would like to share with you some tips on working with cloud and server apps for features present and future. First, keep in mind that server and cloud don't need to be identical. Limitation on both environments might require different solutions. So when you are considering uh, uh, developing a new feature, think cloud first. But if that means that you have to limit it way too much, don't punish your server customers. Go with the next best thing for cloud and keep your original idea for server. And finally, as they say, sharing is caring, but do not overshare. Keep your component simple and share only with when it makes sense. Uh, if you find yourself having too many props to control how your components should behave in either server or, or cloud platforms, consider that you need to have a, you may need to take a step back and break them, break them into smaller subcomponents or even use different components altogether. So this was my first ever experience as a formal speaker. Probably it shows because I'm very nervous. Uh, I hope that this leap out of my comfort zone gave you some useful information. Thank you for coming and I'm here to answer any questions you may have.